Good afternoon, gladiators. We who are about to play Salodio. <laughs> it's always fun coming up with uh, interesting ways to say the same thing at the beginning of every game's gladiator video. I am, of course, Oliver Joyce, your host, here this afternoon for another episode of the Games Gladiator. Today we're playing Sign Mora, which is a shmup. And by shmup, I mean shoot em up. It's a pretty fast-paced, um, exciting, uh, side-scrolling, shoot 'em up style game, and I'm looking forward to checking it out in um, a bit more detail. Uh, I have played this once uh, a few years back, but they recently released um, a, like a high-def uh, version of it um, called Signmore EX about a week ago, and I'm looking forward to um, checking it out. So without further ado, let's get into the game. So here we are playing Sign Mora EX from Digital Reality and Grasshopper Manufacture Incorporated, who I believe are a studio. Um, published by THQ Nordic, who uh, did um, Titan Quest, one of my favorite games. So the original version of this came out in uh, 2013, but it looks like the remake is 2017. Well, when I say remake, the high def. So let's get stuck in. We'll choose a new game. We're using the keyboard today, which isn't really ideal for these kind of games, but I don't have my trusty uh, gamepad um, charged up today. There's a few different game modes you can try as well, uh, like a permadeath mode, challenge, arcade mode, which sort of gets rid of the story, but we'll play the story mode for now, which I believe is the main game mode of the game. This game has been uh, called a bullet hell game uh, by many people, and that's sort of a almost a sub-genre of the shmup category. Uh, so you're learning things today, all these different buzzwords, but bullet hell is basically the kind of game when there are bullets flying everywhere, just going crazy, and your ship uh, has to struggle to avoid them all. Story mode, uh, start new game. Yes, normal. So, when you're, when you're born, there's a story. Um, I've never followed the story. I've only ever played this game for about 10 minutes some years ago. Um, but I was looking through my Steam library and thought we'd uh, check it out. A lot of people say this story is quite text heavy and complicated, and it's kind of a strange thing to have in a shoot 'em up game. I mean, it's probably quite good, but. So, here we have these kind of cool looking. Um, World War II style bombers and fighter jets, um, fighter planes done in a quite a anime, almost a Studio Ghibli style um, look to it. We're gonna need my uh, trusty instant coffee if we're gonna get um, our nerves ready for this um, tough flight. Okay, uh, I'm not sure which plane we are. This game has a quite a nice seamless sort of transition between. Um, the cutscenes and, and your actual plane. So here we are, here's our plane. This little uh, twin engine. Three, two, one, and it's a go! All right, so you, all right, arrows to move, S to shoot, shoot down enemies to add time. Yeah, so it's an interesting one. You basically want to get to the level end before the time runs out. But if you don't shoot anything, you lose all your time, which is kind of a different way of, uh, of playing, really, rather than um, having energy. To be honest, I don't remember anything about the game when I played it some years back. It was in a Steam sale years ago. I used to love the shoot 'em up games. Really big fan as a kid. So they have little health bars there. And that, see, how often they come from the distance. Skip that. Copy that. Sub weapon, so we have a secondary weapon. Damage particularly strong enemies. All right. This is a huge looking airship. Whoa, that's cool. There's missiles, and I'm, we've only got five of them, but we took that guy down. We'll try it on this guy. That does a big amount of damage, but we're all out. It's quite a cool use of the 3D models on a 2D plane. Got him. 
Yeah, when I was a kid, I loved shoot 'em ups. As I was saying, I would go to the video arcade and play the classics like Raiden and even Gallagher and um, R Type, which was one of my favorites back in the Sega days. Um, my buddy Jeff Wicks and I would play that to death, taking it in turns. Um, all very tough games, and you know the arcade ones. You put in your twenty cent coin, and you would last a few minutes, and then you die and you play it again. 1942, uh, we'll do the novice one, it was another great one. And the, one of the cool things about it, well, there were the few kind of games that were two players back in the day. There weren't that many games um, that two people could play on the one screen, and shoot 'em ups were one of them. So Jeff and I would play um, games like Raiden at the local um, video arcade. Oh. There was another really cool one called uh, Xenon 2 from the Bitmap Brothers. And... Oh, so you can kind of slow down time now, which is interesting. But that was two players, I believe. And my favorite of all of them was a game called Tyrion. Not Tyrion Lannister, but Tyrion. Uh, Tyrion, now I'm confused. But this was awesome. This is a PC game. One of the in the classic sort of shareware era around the same time as Doom and that and uh, you had two players you could control one with a keyboard and one with a mouse and so you'd um, each move individually coins okay this tells you what all different power-ups do should probably read that shouldn't I but yeah so you'd you'd move separately but when you moved over each other the ship would lock and one guy would move the mouse to aim and the other guy would control the um, movement of the plane. It was so cool. We played tons and tons of that. Uh, Tyrion. I wonder if it's still available, but it's uh, way ahead of its time. As If that was released as an indie game now, it would kill it. Okay. Da -da -da, I'll skip this. I don't really know. Oh, we got blown up. I mean, there's a story to follow if you're interested. Bombs killed a whole bunch of people. Chapter one. Do you feel invested? A lot of this stuff is, you know, kind of generic sci-fi. But I mean, it could be a good story. Who knows? Is that a furry talking animals and things? <laughs> it's an interesting looking background. This sort of... Um, Avatar style mountains, which are based on a mountain range in China, I believe uh, But some buildings up there that someone decided would be a good idea to um, Build their city on top of these mountains. How would they get? There's construction up there. I believe It's really cool. There are Quite detailed backgrounds Things going on So far the game hasn't been too tough, but we're quite early on. I believe the boss fights are a real um, challenge, even in novice difficulty level. I'm saving up my special powers to until we meet our first boss. I'm basically holding down the um, shoot key, as you often do. Time uh, stabilized. So there's some kind of play on the time theme here. You got to get to the end of the level before the time runs out, as I said. So that's cool. The ship sort of rotates, and the whole level rotates with it, which you don't really see in a lot of 2D um, shoot 'em up games. Whoa! <laughs> that is a big beast, Kolobok, the Sentinel Hexapus, six-legged beast. Oh, damn it! Let's use our specials. What did I do there? I just released my weapons? As bombs? Oh, whoa! Take that! So you gotta aim for the um, eye, of course. They usually have a weak spot. Oh, damn! Time passed. Okay, so we died. We got hit hard. Alright, so I'm gonna aim for the eye. I'm not sure how you're supposed to dodge that. A bit rough. Hit him hard. That's the problem with a lot of these games is like in my 
experience. Sometimes it's like I feel impossible to dodge some of these things. Like that. That's the bullet hell. What are you supposed to do? You just take the damage? Take that. I love that blue weapon, this massive blue laser. That's one of the fun parts of games like this. And you know the classics like Raiden and is just the sheer awesomeness of the weapons as you build up and build up and build up. I believe in this one you can upgrade your ship quite a lot. Back to the regular enemies. At this moment I want to give a bit of a shout out to a fellow developer of mine, a guy called uh, Fat Pug Studios, who's just um, got his coming soon page up on Steam for a game called Rick Henderson. And that is a really cool uh, looking pixel art shoot em up uh, in, the, in the mold of R-Type. Um, I've only seen uh, animated GIFs and, and short videos of it, but I've seen the development process over the last year or so, and I'm really excited to play it. And he's put a lot of love into it. Great effort by a solo developer as well. Just you know, it's remarkable what one or two developers can do these days with um, a bit of skill and creativity and a good game engine. So, where's our power-ups? A oh, what? You don't have any power up. Seven credits remaining. Ooh, rough. So you got to go through this wave of enemies again. So imagine you're playing this in the video arcade and you've got your dollar, five 20 cent coins. Or, you know, that's Australian money. In, in America, you'd be using quarters, of course. Or in England, you'd be using, um, you know, 10p or whatever. Um... But, you know, you've got a little, little bit of money, and so you play your game, a boss like that comes along, totally kicks your ass, and you're dead, and um, your game is over. So you then sit there, and the next person has a go, and you kind of would spend a lot of your time watching each other play and seeing the really good players and how far they could get. Right, get your laser. And that's what I would do. In the mornings before school, I would go to the video arcade and watch games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Street Fighter and Cat Ash and um, oh, Raiden. Damn, this is rough. I don't feel like I've got enough power-ups. I've got to do this bit again. Um, yeah, and they would stick it in your mind because there were no Let's Plays back then. There were no YouTube videos. Occasionally in a magazine or something you might see a screenshot of uh, an area in a game that you'd never seen before but most of the time you didn't really know about the later levels in a lot of arcade games because they were so hard and most kids only had a little bit of money to their name and it's funny going back and playing them via emulators and you know on retro collections and things these days and just going back and finishing those classic games from the past and it's really cool just to see the levels you, you never saw and you know with unlimited credits and stuff like that but some of those games are just so damn tough no way, what am I supposed to do? It's getting rough. And I don't have any, I've got the slow down time. Maybe I'll use that more. But this is a genre that for many, many years disappeared to shoot em up. In the, you know, a lot of 3D games came out and so on and it's become popularized a little these days. You see some quite good ones out there. And it's now become its own little subgenre again, but still a fairly rare thing to see a popular shooter. Like Cuphead was very popular. I didn't like Cuphead very much. I loved the art style, but the game itself was a bit lacking to me. And, you know, it got a lot of accolades because of a beautiful art design and style, but I felt the game wasn't very special and didn't control as nicely as I'd hoped. Take that, take that, take that. Oh, we got more time now. Cool, cool, here we go. So using the slowdown has made a huge difference. We've been able to tackle all these tentacles and take him out like that. We're out of, out of time there, but... What am I aiming at? Ah, the gun turret. Ah, yeah, this is just like R-Type, where you go to a boss and you had to take down the different parts of them. One in sequence. Like, I'm trying to get that gun turret. Cool, got a power up there. Take that, take that, take that, take that. All right. Oh, taking some hits ourselves. Got that. All right. Now got the main gun at the front. We want to dodge that big laser. You can feel the tension, can't you? Well, I can anyway. 
I was never that good at these games as much as I loved them. And it's hard with a keyboard. I find it harder than with a gamepad. All right, we got him. Boom, Games Gladiator. High, high quality. <laughs> oh, so we dip underwater. Taking a deep dive, deep dive into the sea. Avoid the mines. Ooh. Okay, avoid the mines, please. It's a really cool game. Um, I love it. I love the presentation. I'm sure the story is pretty good. I haven't, of course, followed it, but I like the time mechanic uh, mechanism, which you know allows you a little bit of leeway between. You know, it's not just that instant one hit, you're dead. You're allowed a bit of, you know, you can hit a few things. I love those bubble effects. I mean, this game is it's the high def version. It does feel dated. I'm not gonna lie. It does feel like a game from six or seven years ago, 3D wise. But it's beautiful. The art direction is cool. Um, all the particles and so on. And the high def uh, textures, you know, have made a bit of a difference. The portraits are cool. Give me that, give me that. Power up. All low on life. I need to kill some of these enemies to get some more time. Yeah, as I said before, the more enemies you kill, the more time you have extends your life. So this is as far as I've ever been in the game. I don't think I beat that boss when I played the game some years ago. Because as I was saying, I got in a Steam sale and I got a bunch of games and I never played them. And some of the games that I play in the games Gladiator are those games from way back then. That's a problem and I'm sure you guys will agree if you've ever bought games in Steam sales for you know $2, $3, $5, you end up stockpiling them, but you never actually get to play them. Let us through. Cool. So we're going deeper and deeper underwater. This is so much fun. I wonder if... I don't know if it's two-player. I don't think it is, but... It would be fun, two players. Shoot 'em ups um, as a game developer, are one of the first things that you sort of muck around and try to make along with platform games because it's sort of they lend themselves to the basics of game development design and you know simple enemies and shooting bullets at you and dodging hit detection and stuff like that. But most of the time, uh, people never finish them, at least not to a quality of this level. I've mucked around and made one or two little simple shooters but nothing that I ever released nothing on the level of this they require a lot of art a lot of good art you know if I maybe one I always say maybe one day oh what was I doing hit the roof four credits left damn one day maybe I'll make one but I doubt it so how far are we right back to the beginning here that's one thing I could do without is you know I understand the need to go back, but not all the way to the beginning of the stage like we've just done. Dear viewers. Whoa. Sometimes it can be a challenge to sort of uh, see what's in the background and what's in the foreground when you play. It's a really cool looking ship actually. I like that sort of retro bomber style of World War II. Slightly steampunk. I gotta be more careful when I take out those gun turrets up top. Another old timer shoot 'em up story for you kids. Um, there was a game on the Amiga called Blood Money, and I thought about doing a let's play of that, and I might one day because. I love that game so much. I never owned an Amiga, but I had friends that had one. And one of the cool things about the Amiga itself was it had um, sound, a sound card that the PC didn't have. PCs just had like beep, 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 bloop. But Amiga had full on um, digital sound and Blood Money had this introduction that had a really cool techno track in it. And it was just amazing and it really got me psyched for the game. The game itself was really hard and it had four worlds. It was two players of course. But to get to the other two worlds you had to finish the first two. And the first two were so hard that nobody I know ever finished them. And I had dozens of friends that played them and we would all copy the games back in the day. Don't copy games kid, piracy. <laughs> but you know, what can, I, what can I tell you? We all used to do it as kids and I'm sure people do it now. But we would all have versions of Blood Money and everyone would be trying but no one could get past the first two levels so we never 
saw what the other two levels were like until of course um the youtube era when you know the freaks out there that can finish these games on one life without even getting hit um would finish a game like that and so i've seen the end of the game and you know it's funny because in my head that game was this astounding visual feast it doesn't hold up so well but it still looks pretty cool Oh, we only just made that. Look at these giant mines. The scale of things is pretty cool. I like scale in games. Who is that goat man? Why does he keep harassing us? I see you know your judo well. Succulent Chinese meal. What is the charge? Ah, water submarine. Oh, he's a massive, massive boss. This will most likely be the death of us. Often with these games, you've got to learn the boss's patterns. It's no di not so different from a Dark Soul or something. Well, he was pretty easy. I'm sure that's the end of him. Or is it? Look at this huge missile launcher. Whoa. Oh. Oh, that was our special power. I took him out. Ha! <laughs> that massive bomb. It's amazing. Mm. Nope, get away. There's no time for coffee, soldier. I'm gonna take out their torpedoes. Avoid the patterns. There's something just intrinsically fun about playing shoot 'em ups and you know it's the simplest of sort of games you know as far as anyone that sees a shoot 'em up just knows straight away what they're supposed to do in the game you know avoid the bullets collect the power ups you know rinse and repeat and no matter how many of them you play they're always in general just quite fun until they get frustratingly hard you know there's a point where you just don't want to repeat a level indefinitely but let's use a power up slow down time where is oh, there it is good got it yeah the one thing with all these games is you never want to go back to the beginning of a stage too often because it just gets a little dull whoa take out that top exhaust is they're dropping mines on us. This is a bit rough. Slow down time a little bit. They seem to be like uh, magnetized. Mag magnetized. Use your words! Alright, got him! Game's Gladiator delivering once again. You better be in here. Skip that. It's all pretty seamless. It's cool. Well, until there's a <laughs> loading scene like that. Okay, stage complete. Alright, well, we'll start the next stage, but I won't continue much longer. Because I feel like we've um, seen enough for now. Cool as enemies we can um, train with. Because this game is on novice mode, but it gets really hard apparently. Look at this beautiful water. We're above the ground now again. This is so cute. Cute's the wrong word, but it's visually appealing, you know, colorful, and you see the reflection of the ship on the waves. A lot of these games are always set in darkest outer space, but this has a, just a lovely aesthetic to it, which is just appealing and birds in the distance. It's it's a beautiful game. Love to get that big blue laser again, that'd be awesome. And it's kind of interesting how the path sort of shifts around and the camera tilts just a little. Shh. 
soaring up. It's quite hypnotic, isn't it? Mega battleship, Scylla. Uh, Scylla in Greek mythology was one of the um, two guardians of the whirlpool, I think, um, in the Odyssey. Scylla and Hydra? No, I can't remember. Not Hydra. Hydra is the thing with many heads. Scylla and something else. Um, but Odysseus and his crew, when they were um, away on their long voyage, ran into Scylla and they had to escape the grip of the whirlpool. It's a cool story, but I'm sure there is influence there in this beast. This is war two, those tough lasers. Let's use our mega power, which is uh, two extra little ships that are doing their part in helping us out. It's pretty cool. Whoa! Huh. Impressive size to these um, bosses. And it's something that you can really do in 3D, is zooming the camera out and that kind of thing. Whoa. Sometimes you're never quite sure what um, can hit you and what can't. Like, I wasn't sure if I was able to um, crash into him or not, but I was able to, which is good. Ooh, taking a few hits there. Look at that brave guy over here who's somehow invulnerable to our bullets. But he's just uh, guiding the um, tanks out to their doom. Boom. I'm saving my last specials. Just in case we need it soon. Take out those missile turrets. We made short work of this um, skiller. We, so far. Oh. Oh, didn't see that one. That should sink him into the sea. Deep underwater we go. To what end? Hmm. Time mass stabilized. Yeah, we took him out. Wasn't as tough as I thought. Oh, there's a shark. It's hard to tell if it's a giant shark or it's just close. <laughs> but imagine it'd be pretty big. Or we're very small, who knows? I couldn't tell you how many levels there are. I didn't really do much research before this video, as so rarely I do. Um, This game is actually available on quite a lot of platforms. Um, PlayStation, Xbox, I believe it even came out on uh, iOS, a port. So that's an interesting one if you've got an iPad or something. Might be a bit of fun for you. Don't know how easy it would be to control with an iPad. Those virtual D-pads are generally a bit garbage. Ah, oh, this city is awesome. I love it. This cliff city. Uh, that's so cool. Like sort of an ant farm view. Built into the side of a cliff. No rails, of course. Safety first. <laughs> That's really a, a lovely level design. I don't know about these furry animal creatures. I'm not sure what the deal is with them. <laughs> it's never really explained. Or maybe it's just because I've been skipping all the cutscene text. Ah, oh, disgusting worms. Spitting out green fluid when we um, take them out and a satisfying squelch <laughs> in our cavern. Oh, this is so cool. I can't say it enough. It's just, it's fun, you know. It's, it's the simplicity of a game like this. You know, you can, you can keep your AAA games and their complexity and so on. And, you know, they can be awesome as well. But sometimes a good indie game like this that harkens back to the classic arcade days 
is as much fun as you will ever have playing video games. The simple joy of exploring stuff and blowing it up in your retro bomber. I want to check out our new weapon, but I'm just sort of... Ooh, gotta get through, gotta get through, let us through, let us through! Oh no, trap, 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 trap! Oh, we're trapped. Ah, oh, not fair, we got trapped. Um, alright, look. I feel like uh, we've seen enough for today, but what a lot of fun that was! Sign Mora, which um, is available to download on Steam. Um, it's a great game for what it is. It's probably quite cheap now, it was cheap a few years back. And it's a ton of fun, and I highly recommend it uh, if you're looking for a game to play this weekend. All right, everybody, thank you for being with me today on the Games Gladiator. Hi to all new subscribers, and also to the legendary um, fan base that has been with me this whole time. You guys are the best, and I look forward to bringing you many more Games Gladiator videos in the coming weeks and months. Have an awesome weekend. Bye for now.